Hey guys, I'm Tyler and welcome back to the channel. So as you know, we got a new house. It's been about two years ago now. I guess it's nothing new, but this little one is starting to crawl around and get up the stairs really, really quickly. So we needed to build ourselves a railing. We always had a half wall here, but we never had a good way to attach the super ugly gate that we got over there. So we needed to put a newel post in. Why not do a railing while we're at it? I built a newel post just like I did in the past. It's a pine wrap post wrapped with oak. We did solid oak trim this time and then an oak handrail that I got from Menards and oak balusters that I made out of some oak slab that I had laying around. Like so many of the past projects you've watched on this channel, this project is going to start over on the miter saw station. Over there I broke down the rough oak to their rough length and I broke down the Douglas fir 4x4 down to its rough length. Taking the oak over to the jointer I squared up two sides before running it through the planer. I didn't have to square up any sides of the 4x4 as it was relatively square coming from the store. On the planer I took all of the oak down to its final thickness which was one and a quarter inches. I then ran the 4x4 through taking it from three and a half down to three inches. This was nice soft wood so I was able to take giant chunks at one time. All of that rough oak, which is going to be used to make the balusters, needs to be ripped down to a rough one and a quarter inch dimension. So instead of losing a ton of material using the table saw, I used the bandsaw. And then it was back over to the planer to make sure those balusters were nice and square at one and a quarter by one and a quarter. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the pine 4x4 is going to be wrapped with half inch oak plywood. I ripped those down to the proper dimensions on the table saw so that I had four equal parts to wrap around the Douglas fir 4x4. All that lamination was done using wood glue and one and a quarter inch brad nails. Install your first piece of laminate and then rotate your 4x4 over and repeat four times until all four sides are wrapped in the oak plywood. For added durability and to make the newel post a little bit wider, I wrapped the bottom with solid oak. Here I'm just measuring out so I can make my double miter boards on the table saw. While I was over at the table saw, I also ripped a miter down a longer board that will allow for oak mitered corners all up the side of the newel post, cutting things down to their final dimension using the chop saw and then it is back over to the newel post for the installation and I use wood glue and brad nails for this as well. Before gluing on the mitered trim that we cut on the table saw earlier, I actually glued it together using these mitered spring clamps to make sure that we had a perfect seam on that outside corner. So I glued up four of these, one for each corner of that post, before installing just like the other trim using wood glue and brad nails. Right now we are actually looking at a half newel post which is going to go on the opposite end of the full newel post that we've been building up to this point. I wanted to add some decorative trim on both of the newel posts to break up the length. It was back and forth to the miter saw to get a perfect fit and then I glued them in place. I used wood glue and I used some fast acting tight bond adhesive so that I didn't have to use any brad nails in this location. And one last time we are back over to the table saw to cut some decorative trim that we will make the cap for both of the newel posts. I cut a bunch of pieces of trim down and then a very puckering experience is cutting the cap. This is just an angled piece that I cut four times to give me a nice point in the middle of the newel post. I glued and brad nailed that in place and then again back and forth to the miter saw to get a perfect fit for the trim that wraps the cap.
and we are now done assembling the newel post. I used a little bit of spackle to close up any seams and then it was sanding up to 220 grit using my 6 inch random orbit sander and then it is ready to spend some time on the balusters before we apply any paint or finish. If you are interested in the plans for this newel post you can find them using the link down in the description below or just by going to DIYTyler.com and checking out our store over there. And moving on to the balusters, we are back over at the miter saw, cutting all the angles on both sides of the balusters. Now, you need to be careful because this angle is going to be different for every single staircase out there, so I took a bevel gauge to make the measurements for mine and worked my way from there. Once all of the balusters were cut to their final length, I moved over to the router table where I used some stop blocks strategically placed on either side to allow me to put a 45 degree chamfer on all four sides of the balusters. Here you can see where I bump up against those stops, so I have a portion on either end of the baluster that doesn't have a chamfer on it. Once all that routing was complete, it was over to the drum sander, which I admit is a total luxury to have in the shop, but by golly does it cut down on an incredible amount of hand sanding. For the finish, we are going to be using General Finish's Shaker Maple Water Base Stain for the balusters, and I actually decided, kind of mid-project, to paint the newel post instead of stain them. There was a couple reasons for this. One was that I had to put some brad nails in locations I wasn't originally planning to keep the build moving, but secondly, we really liked the look of this at our old house, so we decided to go with it again. For the top coat, I'm going to be using General Finish's High Performance Top Coat in a semi-gloss, sprayed using my Fuji Q5 Platinum. Like always, spray every single time. It'll save you so much time, every time. I dialed back my system so that I had a nice gentle spray and very little overspray. Some people are concerned about spraying in the shop, but it is a water-based finish, so if it does get on your tools, all it's really going to do is make it slippery, and honestly, by the time this stuff hits the ground, it's usually dry anyway. I sprayed three coats on the balusters, the handrail, and the cap that is going to go on this half wall that you're seeing right here, and then it was time to move inside for the installation. First order of business was to remove the carpet and use my multi-tool to cut through so that the portion of the newel post that goes down into your basement or crawl space pokes through the floor so that it's accessible to the joists down below. Before going down below to install the newel post, I used a utility knife to cut the caulk around this half wall cap so that we're ready to install our new oak one that we made. I used a heavy layer of tight bond construction adhesive to glue down this new oak cap that we made. I didn't really show any of this, but really it's just a flat board with a chamfer on either side. It does fit in well to the newel post, which is why I wanted to put this in place before fastening it permanently down below. I used a countersink bit and some two and a half inch decking screws to permanently mount the cap into place. I did add plugs later on, so there's a nice seamless shaker maple wood look over the top. Now let's get that newel post in and permanently mounted in place. We'll do some work upstairs before moving down below to add some more support. So I had to actually drill through this post completely so that I could add a six inch structural screw directly through this post right into the half wall. A little bit of construction adhesive and two of those six inch screws and this thing is not going anywhere. As you can see, our half wall wasn't exactly plumb, so I had to use some shims to make sure the newel post was perfect. I filled this gap later with caulk, and you can't even tell that it's there.
And moving down below, which in our situation is a crawl space, I don't really know why. I can pretty much walk in here. Not sure why they didn't go the extra foot to make the crawl space. But I added two boards that are spanning between the joists, lots of construction adhesive, and a bunch of two and a half inch decking screws to make sure this thing is not going to wiggle when the kids go flying down the stairs and turn the corner. Moving back upstairs, I applied some construction adhesive so that we can install the half newel on the upper portion of the railing. We glued and then used some 6 inch structural screws to permanently fasten this thing in place. And now for cutting the handrail, which I did get from Menards, it was about 50 bucks and all I had to do with this was a little bit of sanding and stain and finish it. I had to cut this angle and this is not exactly a fun experience because you need to be super careful because you really only have one try to get this right. It is better to go long than to go short because I haven't figured out a board stretcher yet. I countersunk holes on either side of the railing, applied some construction adhesive, and with the help of the wife, held the handrail in place while I fastened the screws. When we moved up to fasten the top, we actually realized that part of that decorative trim that I installed it was actually too high, so we couldn't have the handrail low enough to make the balusters tight. Here we are discussing trying to figure out what we do, and as you can see with my left hand covering it right now, I actually notched out the handrail so that it sat snug against that trim, and this worked perfect. You, sometimes you just have to fly with the problems as they approach you. A little bit of construction adhesive on either side of the balusters, and then using a spacer to make sure our spacing was perfect between all the balusters, we laid them into place and fastened them with one and a quarter inch 18 gauge brad nails. The strength is not coming from these brad nails, it's actually coming from the construction adhesive, but this is a quick way to allow us to move on to the next baluster and get this railing done. Well, there we are, folks. That is a wrap on that railing. And this thing will last us for as long as we own the home and the person after us. That is simply the best way to install a newel post. You can go flying down those stairs, turn the corner, and that thing is not going to go anywhere because it is firmly attached to the structure of the house. I will have plans for that newel post on my website. You can find a link to that down below or just go to DIYTyler.com where we have all sorts of other good stuff for you to get your hands on and I would love to see you guys over there. If this video helped you out, please hammer that thumbs up button. Helps us out and gets this video in front of more eyes. I'm DIY Tyler. You guys are the Thai nation and you guys have a good one.